Chapter 21, Development and Growth of the Skull and Age Changes Question 1. Which of the following bones develop by endochondral ossification? A. The ribs B. The ribs and sternum C. The ribs, sternum, and clavicle D. The ribs, sternum, clavicle, and vertebrae Correct answer is B. The ribs and sternum. All bones of the postcranial skeleton develop by endochondral ossification except the clavicle, which is formed by intramembranous ossification. Question 2 Which of one of the following statements about the postnatal growth of the maxilla is correct? A. Pneumatization by enlargement of the developing maxillary sinus ceases at puberty. B. Space is created for the eruption of the permanent molars by resorption of the maxillary tuberosity. C. The zygomatico maxillary sutures contribute to increase in height and length of the maxilla. D. The intermaxillary suture closes about 8 years postnatally. Correct answer is C. The zygomatico maxillary sutures contribute to increase in height and length of the maxilla. The maxilla like all bones of the viscera cranium, follows the somatic growth pattern so does not cease growth until maturity. The maxillary sinus is still enlarging and growth at the intermaxillary and zygomatico-maxillary sutures takes place until maturity. The orientation of the zygomatico-maxillary suture means that bone addition here adds to length and height of the bone. Bone deposition takes place at the maxillary tuberosity. Question 3. Which one of the following statements about the growth of the mandible is correct? A. The mental symphysis closes at about one year postnatally. B. The condylar growth cartilage ceases activity at puberty. C. The ossification center appears about eight weeks. I.U.L. medial to Meckel's cartilage. D. The functional matrix acting on the angle of the mandible is the lateral pterygoid muscle. Correct answer is A. The mental symphysis closes at about one year postnatally. The condylar growth cartilage is active until maturity. The mandible is the second bone in the body, after the clavicle, to begin ossification at seven weeks, the bone begins to form lateral to Meckel's cartilage. The lateral pterygoid muscle is attached to the condyle and influences its growth, the masseter and medial pterygoid muscles attached to the angle affect growth in that area. Question 4. The bones of the viscera cranium develop initially by a. Endochondral ossification and follow the somatic growth pattern. b. Endochondral ossification and follow the neural growth pattern. c intramembranous ossification and follow the somatic growth pattern d intramembranous ossification and follow the neural growth pattern correct answer is c intramembranous ossification and follow the somatic growth pattern endochondral ossification occurs in the postcranial skeleton except the clavicle and the basi cranium chondrocranium Intramembranous ossification occurs in the neurocranium and viscera cranium. The neurocranium follows the neural growth pattern whereas the viscera cranium follows the somatic growth pattern. Question 5. The sphenooccipital synchondrosis. A. Is a secondary growth cartilage. B. Influences the position of the viscera cranium. C. Ceases activity at 7 years of age. D can be reactivated in patients affected by acromegaly. Correct answer is B. Influences the position of the viscera cranium. Primary cartilages are those that form the cartilaginous template of bones that develop by endochondral ossification, a secondary cartilage appears in a bone developing by intramembranous ossification. The body of the sphenoid and the basal part of the occiput contribute to the cranial base which develops by echo. The cranial base continues to grow after seven years to harmonize the growth of the neurocranium following the neural growth pattern with the viscera cranium following the somatic growth pattern. 
Acromegaly can reactivate the condylar secondary cartilage and remnants of primary cartilages in the bones of the hand and feet. Question 6. A dished face profile is often associated with A. A protruding mandible due to reactivation of the condylar cartilage by acromegaly. B. A recessive maxilla due to failure of elongation of the cranial base. C. An enlarged frontal bone due to hydrocephaly. D. Defective development of the maxillary air sinus. Correct answer is B. A recessive maxilla due to failure of elongation of the cranial base. A dished face is the profile when the forehead and mandible are normal in size but the mid face is sunken in because it is not pushed far enough forward when the cranial base does not elongate sufficiently. Acromegaly produces a protrusive mandible but does not affect the forehead so markedly, likewise hydrocephaly produces an enlarged forehead but does not affect the mandible. The maxillary sinus affects the size of the maxilla but not its position.